This EVMS training snippet, sponsored by the Department of Energy's Office of Project Management, is the first of two snippets regarding Management Reserve, or MR, versus Contingency. The purpose is to provide a common understanding within DOE and among DOE contractors, and to provide consistency. Snippet 6.3a is a discussion of Management Reserve and Contingency concepts, purposes, and uses. Snippet 6.3b provides detailed scenarios of how normal project changes impact the performance measurement baseline, management reserve, projected variances at completion, and DOE contingency. The difference between management reserve and DOE held contingency can be confusing. They are not the same, nor do they equal each other. This snippet will explain their similarities and their distinctly different purposes. Management Reserve, or MR, and Contingency are both used on DOE contracts to adjust the resources used in the execution of a project. However, they have some significant differences. MR is controlled by the contractor, while Contingency by DOE. MR is considered an element of the contractor's budget, while Contingency a source for funding by DOE. MR is primarily used to adjust scope at the control account level within a contract, without any changes in the contract level scope, while contingency is used by the DOE to cover project cost overruns and fund contractual changes within the performance baseline, or PB, scope, schedule, and cost. The amount of MR budget held by a contractor is limited by the contractor's total allocated budget, or TAB while the amount of contingency funding is limited by the DOE Total Project Cost, or TPC. This snippet will expand on the differences between these tools and the uses of each. Before we dive into the details of these concepts, we will provide some top-level definitions of each. Management Reserve is the contractor's budget for management control purposes. This budget is a part of the contract budget base, or project budget base, and is applied to the performance measurement baseline when authorized internal changes are made. Refer to snippet 1-11, entitled Varying Project and Contract Structures, or the DOE EVMS Gold Card for information relative to the relation of the contract budget base, CBB, and the project budget base, PBB. Contingency is the DOE's funding source for unforeseeable costs within a project. It may be applied to fund contractual changes within the project's performance baseline scope, schedule, and cost. And it may be applied to pay the bill for overruns on cost reimbursement type contracts. DOE is responsible to reimburse the contractor for all allowable costs up to the cost and funding limits established in the contract in accordance with FAR Clause 52.232-18, Limitations of Cost, for any fully funded cost reimbursement contracts, and 52.232-22, Limitations of Funds Clause, as applicable for incrementally funded cost reimbursement contract. The graphic on this slide provides a context in which to understand the components of the performance baseline, or PB. Those elements in light blue are controlled by the DOE, and the elements in gray by the contractor. Starting at the top, the performance baseline represents the total project cost for DOE. This is broken down to three elements. DOE held contingency, the contract price issued to the contractor, and DOE held reserves for other direct project costs. The contract price issued to the contractor is comprised of two different components, the profit, or fee, and the total allocated budget, or TAB. The TAB equals the contract budget base unless an over-target baseline has been declared and approved. The contractor then takes the TAB, or CBB or PBB, when no OTB exists, and breaks it down into Management Reserve, or MR, and the Performance Measurement Baseline, or PMB. This snippet does not focus on the components of the PMB, but the TAB is the level at which budget is managed by the contractor. We will start with an explanation of contingency, which is a cost reserved owned by the customer, in this case, the DOE. 
It is held outside the project scope, schedule, and budget that have already been provided to the contractor. On the performance baseline components chart, recall that contingency was shown above the total allocated budget. The contingency is the source for additional funding. DOE must ensure adequate funds are available to pay for all the completed contractual work scope. It tracks to the estimate at completion, which represents the best estimate for the final cost of the project, plus profit, fees, and other direct costs. Contingency funds are used to pay for overruns. DOE can also use the contingency as funding to increase the contract target cost with budget and within-scope modifications to the current project statement of work. In this case, after receipt of the contract modification, the contractor adds the budget for the change to the contract budget base or project budget base. Remember that the government has to have funding to pay the bill for the project scope requirements. The government also has to ensure that any changes or additional project scope have sufficient funding available. Should the contractor incur cost overruns, the contingency is available as funding to cover those allowable actual costs. The requirements of MR, contingency, budget, and funds must be consistently established and followed. The process is very similar whether the project is executed under either an MNO or non-MNO contract. Even though significant differences may exist in contract funding mechanisms between MNO and non-MNO contracts. For example, while under a non-MNO contract, contingency is held by DOE outside the contract and specific contract action must be taken to place and use contingency on contract. Under an MNO contract arrangement, all available funds, including contingency, may be available on contract, thus not requiring specific contract action to place on contract. Nonetheless, specific written DOE approval must still be obtained for any contingency use. Specifically, contingency must be held by the MNO above the project level CBB or PBB, and explicit controls must be established between DOE, the MNO contractor management, and the project level PM for use of any contingency. The contract project managers are responsible for establishing and managing the MR. Approval for MR use outside the contractor PM is not required. Let's switch to Management Reserve, or MR. It is an amount of the total budget set aside by the contractor from the tab for management control purposes. The purpose of Management Reserve is to have budget that can be applied due to unexpected growth within the currently authorized work scope, rate changes, risk handling, and other project unknowns. It is used to budget future internal needs, but it may not be used to pad the future to offset previously accumulated overruns or underruns. When the prime contractor is negotiating with the government customer, MR is typically not separately identified, and once it is identified, it cannot be eliminated from pricing during subsequent negotiations or used to absorb the cost of project-level scope changes. The MR budget is initially established during the early baselining period after contract authorization. While the value of the MR budget is at the discretion of the contractor's project management team, the process should be tied to the identification of project risks and overall risk levels identified. It is anticipated that projects with greater risk and unknowns will have a larger reserve budget. However, there is no requirement that the application of the MR will be limited to the identified risks. In fact, if a contractor does this, it may be an indication that well-defined and probable scope has been left out of the baseline. MR is a budget without specific scope assumptions. All contractually authorized scope must be held in the performance measurement baseline and distributed to control account managers in a timely manner. Generally, MR can be used by the contractor's PM to plan or replan future effort not yet started for one or more of the following reasons. It may be used for previously unrecognized tasks and identified risks that are consistent within the scope of work of the contract. All risks, unrealized and realized, are usually identified, quantified, and tracked through a risk register. MR may be used for changes in execution strategy, 
An example would be a make or buy decision that is changed from the original baseline plan. This is an example of an assumption change that would be included in the approval documentation. MR may be used for unexpected future internal scope growth within the currently authorized scope of the project. MR may be used for changes in direct or indirect rates. Also included would be currency fluctuations. MR may be used for risk and opportunity handling. However, allocating MR for cost or schedule variance-based risks is inappropriate. MR may be used for work that needs to be repeated. However, it is not appropriate to be added as budget when the progress has been inaccurately reported. MR may be used to change future budget for work not yet started. For example, the baseline may have been estimated prior to final negotiations of subcontractor work. MR may be used to increase the budget associated with final negotiations. However, not if the effort has begun. As a good rule of thumb, MR transactions must be related to the change in work scope at the control account level. The only exception is for rate changes. MR can never be used to eliminate a performance-driven variance. There are some guidelines for applying MR budget. It should be for new work which has not yet been planned or begun, meaning performance has not been taken and actual costs not incurred. The burden of proof is on the contractor to demonstrate that MR use is legitimate and meets the requirements of internal procedures. MR should be applied beyond the planning freeze period identified in the contractor's system description. This is generally more than one month in the future. Current period scope changes should be minimized and any urgency of need must be documented. If the MR budget allocation impacts an active existing work package or set of work packages, it is preferred that those affected work packages are closed and replanned with the additional scope and budget in new work packages. We discussed earlier that MR cannot be used to offset accumulated variances, overruns or underruns. In the first example, we see a completed work package with a cost variance of plus 10, which is a positive variance, meaning that the work package had a cost underrun. Should a work package complete with a negative cost variance, like the second example, then it is reported as a cost overrun. EVMS does not allow transferring positive variances from completed work packages to MR for any use. That is referred to as harvesting. Cost metrics are reported as is. This is important to understand because it is from the variances that management can help predict and manage future performance. Therefore, the performance results, both favorable and unfavorable, must be retained throughout the life of the project to reflect how the budgeted scope for each work package was actually completed in terms of earned value and cost. This information aids management in predicting future performance. MR is the contractor's budget, and it is the contractor's responsibility to manage MR wisely for the risks over the life of the project. The contractor PM must ensure that MR will be used prudently during the life of the project. Depleting MR while there are significant project risks greatly increases the chances of a contract overrun and is an early warning sign for a probable over-target baseline. It is important to note that MR is never required to be allocated. MR allocation is subject to the PM's approval based on the CAM's definition of the requirement for new scope and any project impact, and whether any MR remains that is available for allocation. It is important that MR be carefully controlled and monitored in formal records, such as the MR and CBB or PBB logs. These logs must be directly traceable to the IPMR with narrative explanations of MR use included in Format 5. DOE contingency cannot be used to replenish MR. MR cannot be allocated beyond what exists. In other words, the balance cannot be negative. In summary, both MR and contingency are tools used to adjust the resources as the project proceeds based on new information. They are required for successful execution of the performance baseline. MR is considered the contractor's tool in that it is a budget reserve set aside for contractor management use. 
the MR can be applied due to unexpected growth within the currently authorized work scope, rate changes, risk handling, and other project unknowns. No contractual change is required for MR use. Contingency is DOE's tool and is a funding source for both project cost performance and for the addition of contractual scope within the project's performance baseline. Please refer to Snippet 63 b for a discussion of different management reserve and contingency detailed scenarios of how normal project changes impact the performance measurement baseline, management reserve, projected variances at completion, and DOE contingency. For additional information relative to EVMS procedures, templates, helpful references, more snippets, and training materials, please refer to DOEPM's external EVM homepage or the internal max.gov PM library. Check back periodically for updated or new information. Thank you for using the Snippet Library.